is going to be all about what happens after you get that email that says congratulations! Yay! When so, you see that email in your inbox, if the title of it says congratulations, my heart stopped. I was sitting in philosophy in a lecture hall mm -hmm. and I just couldn't contain myself. I know, it was just like I'm ready for story time. Like I was, she had gotten hers about a week or two before I got mine, so I was sort of freaking out. You I know. cried. Yeah. I called, like, I was sitting in a lecture hall. I called my mom. I was like, Mom, I need to go. I got in. I didn't, couldn't even, like, open the, like, she's like, well, what, like, what role did you get? I'm like, I don't care. I got in. Yeah. I just remember when I got mine, I had already been, like, freaked out because she had gotten in. And I was like, I want her to go no matter <laughs> what, but I want to go with her. <laughs> and there was just this one random day I was walking, and I think it was a Friday because... There was a weird thing going around in the Facebook group that I can the recruiting tell you office that exactly closed was on the Friday. weekend. And so it was like 4 o'clock on a Friday and recruiting closed at 5. So nobody got emails after 5 on Fridays. It was a weird thing. Facebook people, the Facebook groups are very intense, let me tell you. But anyway, I was getting off of a bus. And <laughs> it was a very crowded bus. And I like look at my phone because it dinged. And I stopped on the stairs and I almost fell. And I started crying. And a bunch of people started looking at me. So I called my mom really quick. And I was like... I got in, and then they all started smiling. So your mom didn't weird. even answer the phone, mind I know, I you. Left a message. <laughs> okay, I was at Dunkin' Donuts on my campus, all the way up in Connecticut. We're very far away. I'm just waiting in line for my Dunkin' Donuts, and then I see her name on my phone, and I like bolted off of this line, and I was like, "Oh my God, you got in!" I just knew, and I think I was on the phone with my dad too, and I was like, "Dad, I gotta go." Yeah. So after you get to that fun part, <laughs> now it's time to think about. Oh, oh goodness, what now do I do next? Now move to Disney World. <laughs> or Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... So one of the most fun parts about the getting to a Disney park process is picking the roommates that you're going to live with during your college program. For us, we wanted to live in a three-bedroom apartment with four other girls, so it would be us in a room and then two and two. So we found them via the Facebook group. So for each program, some, I don't even know who starts these Facebook groups, but if you just look them up on Facebook for whatever program you're interested in, there's going to be a Facebook group for it, and there's going to be tons of people looking to find their roommates. And there's usually a couple of Facebook groups, so I would recommend, you know, yeah, getting into all of them because... <laughs> Sometimes one of them will get incredibly... For ours, like, <laughs> one of them was very organized and very legit, and then there was one that had a different cover photo that every time, like, a notification came up for it, and I saw that, I was like, nah, I don't care about this one, that one's weird. Yeah, but at least if you're in a couple of them, you can sort of see a lot of different information mm -hmm. and a lot of different questions that are being asked, and so, you know, look around on the Facebook, <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> Once you have your roommates picked out and it gets closer to your arrival date, you're going to get an email from Disney saying that you now have access to dorms, which is basically the website they use to link your roommates to you so you can hopefully live with them when you get down there or yeah. to wherever, and I shall explain the hopefully. So we're going to throw a little bit of a disclaimer in here. For our program, dorms was changed about halfway through. Bring some apparatus of making coffee if you're into coffee because you're going to need coffee. You're going to need a lot of coffee. <laughs> yes. And also kind of coordinate with your roommates for like bigger things because Disney does give you plates and bowls and forks and pointy Sharp knives. knives. <laughs> um, but for things like just big old mixing bowls and frying pans and baking sheets. A they... griddle if your roommates like a griddle. I'm talking to you, Megan. <laughs> Megan, yo pancakes. <laughs> But yeah, so like appliances and just sort of, I mean, if you like baking cupcakes for 
those days where you work for 24 hours in Magic Kingdom because it's going to be open for 24 hours for some sort of frozen themed event. If you want to make cupcakes for your lovely co-workers, you're going to need a cupcake tin. <laughs> so basically what we're trying to say is that there are big items that you have at home that you could bring for your kitchen. Coordinate with your roommates so you don't bring two of the same thing. And if not, buy it at Walmart or the dollar store. There's going to be stuff when you get there that you're not going to have. If it's on the list, this is a fun tip. They're gonna give you a list of everything your kitchen's supposed to come with. If you do not have it, go to the front desk and they will give it to you. Do not go and buy it before you go over that entire list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for just the apartment in general, bring a router. Yes. Bring a router. Buy a router. I don't care what you would do to get that router, but if you want any sort of internet access, need it because there is internet access in the clubhouse however it's sort of nice to use not data on your phone when you're laying in bed and the Wi-Fi is bad we've gotten that question a couple of times the internet access is slow but I don't want to say it's free because you're paying for it in your rent but it it's something and it works so that's all that really matters you will not have an ample amount of time to even use the internet you yeah know, honestly but I believe they gave this an, an ethernet cord didn't they no, I brought it. Okay, so bring an ethernet cord as well. I can't give it to all of you. <laughs> all right. We also recommend that you kind of bring a couple of essential items with you, for example, toilet paper, because you might want that before your first Walmart trip. Yeah. Because if you have casting on your very first day of move-in, like I did, you're not going to be able to get to Walmart until later in the evening. <laughs> yeah, so kind of just bring a few odds and ends that you're going to need for the first day because your roommates and yourself are not going to necessarily be on the same schedule. So if you could bring a couple snacks, some cleaning supplies, so you can kind of clean your room up a little bit before you start putting all your stuff. Maybe that's just me who thought that that was a necessity, but you know shower curtains, odds and ends for your bathroom. Disney does not provide that, so you're gonna either have to bring it with you or go get it once you get down there. And if you know that one of your roommates is driving down, see if you can kind of coordinate with them because they're gonna have a little bit more cargo space, if you will, <laughs> than somebody who's flying down and only really gets a suitcase and a carry-on. If you're gonna bring a TV with you, they do not provide one, so if you want one, you'll have to bring it. Make sure you bring the cable cord that connects to the wall because there is a spot to plug it in, but they do not provide you with the cord that connects to your TV. As far as bedroom goes, um, the beds are standard twin, not dorm twin extra long. So, However, I, had a, I brought a twin XL sheet and comforter set and they fit just fine. Yeah, they work. And then other than that, clothing, clothing. Girls, you do not need your entire wardrobe. You do not. You're not even going to have time to wear more than like five-ish outfits total in your program. Yeah. Honestly, you're going to be in your costume like 99% of the time. Sometimes you're going to be in different costumes because that's your prerogative. <laughs> but just honestly, bring some staples, bring a pair of jeans. Bring a sweatshirt because it will get chilly. It will. No matter what program you're on, you're going to be there during some sort of winter months. And I honestly, I don't know the weather in California, but I'm assuming it's going to get chilly there too. <laughs> it's got to sometime, right? Just bring the bare minimum that you know, like just bring the clothes that you know you're going to wear. You don't need to bring a ton of options. If you end up forgetting something that you think you might have wanted, the outlets are just a short walk away. And if for Vista, you could take the bus to wherever mm -hmm. and... There are options for you to purchase clothing while you're there, which I think you'll want to do anyway. So it's kind of better to downsize your closet before you get there and then kind of fill it up along the way with new stuff that you might want to get. The only thing I really would strongly recommend that you put a lot of thought into packing. I know they just recently changed the rules about traditions that you do not have to dress business casual. It's just sort of casual. I really recommend bringing business clothes. I honestly, I think I brought three full business outfits because if you take a class, they expect you to be in business casual. But there's also networking events and things Seekers. you want to be a little bit more cleanly dressed for. Especially sometimes your training is going to happen at, you know, a classroom in an office. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend 
getting a little bit more dressed up for those types of events. Even for your training on location, they expect you to be in business casual when you arrive. Even if they're going to fit you for your costume that day, you're still expected to be dressed professionally. And it's honestly kind of just a good investment to have for the rest of your college career too, because probably after this internship, you're going to look for more internships that will require you to wear regular business clothes to an interview. So definitely put some thought into that. Make sure you're comfortable in the clothes because you're going to be doing a lot of walking in them too, especially for traditions. And I know for my traditions class, nobody really dressed casually, even though they said you could, everyone still came in business clothes. So just kind of put a little bit of thought into that. Yeah, I would definitely avoid the jeans and flip-flops. Heels are not necessary. No. Flats, girls. Flats. Flats. Yes, unless Unless you are like that lady from Jurassic, Jurassic World <laughs> who can honestly run away from a Tyrannosaurus Rex in heels, then you do you. Well, wasn't and more power to you. Drawn, but it's like they made their yeah, own. but she got the flare and then she... Like, but she didn't run away from the T-Rex. She was recruiting him. Yeah, but she kind of... She had to run and from him and the raptor tag team that took him down and then shamboo eat him. Spoiler alert. So, we've talked a lot about what you should bring. Here's what not to bring. Weapons. <laughs> No, no, lightsabers. Yeah. Don't purchase them while you're there either, because if you get caught with them... Mace. Unless it is the size that they say is okay. Which I do not know off the top of my head. Neither do I. <laughs> Any sort of alcoholic paraphernalia, such as a wine glass or a shot glass, if you are going to be living in a wellness apartment. AKA if you are under 21 and all of your roommates are under 21. No, no. No, no. No, 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 no. If you buy them in the parks, just keep keep them, them wrapped completely up. wrapped. It can't even show the sign that it could have been used while in your apartment. Unless it has toothpicks in it, because they are called toothpick, toothpick holders. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> and it's like, that. It, it even says that on the Disney Store website now, too. I know. Do you want to know why? Because when Walt Disney World oh, yeah. and Disney Land opened, alcohol was not served in the parks, therefore they could not justify selling alcoholic accessories so they were put into the system as toothpick holders and even though alcohol is served there now to this day in our handy dandy little matra it comes up as a toothpick holder when you ring it up yeah so candles anything with an open flame anything flame yeah just anything if you've lived in a dorm before anything that your ra would probably make you get rid of just leave it anything you would need to nail to the wall no, mm -hmm. you're not even really supposed to use command strips that hold above a certain weight. We used ones to hang up Christmas lights and we passed inspections every time and they never gave us even like a slight problem with that, but that might depend on who your inspector yeah. is. So just be careful with stuff like that. Any sort of decor that could damage the walls is not permitted. One of the most important things we can advise you to bring is any document that Disney tells you to bring. They're asking you to bring it for a reason, and if you do not bring said documents, you will run into a few road bumps. I'm not gonna say problems, because everything can be fixed and there's sort of a way around it, but be as prepared as you can with the things that they asked you to bring for the check-in process. Yeah, and definitely bring any document that you that your parents think you might need. Such as your health insurance card, because even though you yeah. think you're invincible and you've never gotten sick in your life, you're going to get sick when you're there. Yeah, just honestly bring any documentation that isn't so sensitive that it can't leave your house, but you think you may need if you were to run into any sort of problem where you need a documentation that you don't have and can't readily accessible to you because it's a thousand <laughs> miles away to the north. Also bring some money with you because for the first, I'm going to say week or two, you're not going to be paid because of training and whatnot. It's just kind of a weird pay schedule in the beginning, but that is why you put the deposit in, in the first place to cover your rent. But you're going to have expenses other than rent for those first two weeks. So just make sure whether it's on your debit card or cash that you bring along with you, that you have some form of payment for a variety of things that are going to come up. So that is it for this video. If you want to see any of the other videos we have in this series, they will be linked in the down bar. Feel free to contact either of us on Tumblr or through the comments to answer any questions that we may not have answered in this video that you potentially have. And have a magical day.